biology teacher at Prestonsburg High School. Um, I always ask my kids each year like what they want to do, and it's always that they want to do um, some labs. So what I do each year is try to find different hands-on labs that they can do. So this is what I'm going to be talking about um, through my outline, which the biggest um, thing that I had to deal with this year was that we had computers to work with our students with this year. So not only would they be doing hands-on labs, but we would also have virtual labs that we would do. So I tried to look at labs that they would have that they would also have virtual labs that they could look at. So my area of focus was I had biology students, 10th grade, um, they wanted hands-on learning. So we looked at cell biology, genetics, things that you know you can't just see with your hands, but they wanted real life experience, things that they saw like on CSI and things like that, that they watch on TV, but they also had computers. They want to be able to see it, feel it, touch it, but then also be able to put it to real life experiences. Uh, so when you look, uh, some of the things that we looked at was, why do I need to learn this? Why does everybody in class have to do these things and stuff? And how can I apply this to, you know, what I do every day? And stuff. So we looked at, you know, what they watch on TV, what they read about in their books, you know, that interests them alone, not just the books that they have to read for their English classes and stuff, but what they actually see and what they actually do. And we did this last year with my biology kids. And so when I get these new biology kids, they're like, ooh, when are we going to do that this year? When am I going to do the genes in the bottle? Because, you know, they saw it last year from my kids. And some of my kids with the little genes in the bottle necklace, they kept it and they still even have it this year. So my, my new kids come in, they're like, ooh, when am I going to do that? So they're all excited about it this year. So my findings was that if they have hands-on experiences, if they can see it and touch it and then actually do virtual labs with it too and then go around and read about it, they actually do better in their tests. They actually understand it, even if the questions are harder for them to understand, they can, they can do better on it because they've actually seen it. They've actually can feel like a gel electrophoresis in their hands because as soon as they see the gels, they're like, ooh, I want to touch that. What does it feel like? And stuff. it's more than just seeing it on TV and be like, oh, well, that's not real. They actually see it that, hey, yeah, it is real. They want to do dissections, and they don't want to look just in a textbook every day and stuff. We don't use textbooks at all in my classroom. Like, they hardly ever pick up a, a textbook at all. We hardly ever do lectures now because now that they all have a computer that they get to take home, they look at the PowerPoints at home and then we come back and we talk about it. And then they go straight in and they'll do a virtual lab. Like we can't talk about bacteria and then go actually swab everything because we don't know what kind of bacteria we're going to grow. But we can do a virtual lab about it and read about it on the computers with these virtual labs and then we can see what we have. And then we can do our microscopes and look at them, you know, prepared slides and see what they are. And then we've done this virtual lab, then do cases with these kids, you know, case one, case two, case three, and try to figure out what symptoms they had and then what type of virus or bacteria that they had. So it was actually pretty cool with the um, computers that they had that went along with it. So it was real life, real time things that they did. So first we started off that we had um, just cells themselves. Some were prepared slides, some were living cells with amoebas and paramecium so that they could actually see them moving on the microscopes and stuff. Then they did a virtual lab on how to learn to use the microscopes and how to see the, the real um, microscopes, how to move them and stuff. So they had it kind of all three ways. They learned what a microscope was, what the parts were, they did a virtual lab on it, and then they actually used a microscope itself. So it was all of them together. Uh, so here's showing them that, you know, they saw the microscope, they did the virtual lab, and then here's the actual first part of my grant that I had where they got the cell theory kit where they had to stain an onion cell and see how the cells were for it, which, you know, those cells are dead. Then they had the amoeba, the euglena, um, and they could actually see them moving around on the slide, which was the first time they actually 
saw living cells moving around on it, and they really enjoyed that. Then we moved on, and this shows the actual ones right here, the amoeba, the euglena, and the elodea tip, and that brought in, you know, our photosynthesis and how they got their food and all of that. Then we moved on to um, the genes, and we talked about our DNA and how our DNA works, how you have your plant DNA. They saw the cheek cells. Again, you had a virtual lab with it. Then we did a real hands-on life one, so they had both because some like, you know, the computer version better than, you know, the hands-on one. So they had both versions they could see. And uh, then they had their jeans in the bottle, which is the one some of the kids like the best because they actually get to scrape their cheek cells and then watch and see their DNA appear. And it comes with its own little necklace at the end that they get to keep. And they get real excited because... They get their little necklace and they get to show it off to everybody else. And some make it into bracelets. And, you know, then my juniors I had last year, they're like, oh, I still have mine. And they feel like they've all bonded together. Then we move on to actually the forensics part. And we talk about, you know, how this can be used in, you know, DNA testing to see, you know, like, who's the father or if it's the CSI crime scene forensics. And I set up different little uh, CSI scenes, you know, to where you find out, you know, who was the murderer or who was the victim and if this is the victim or if it was their, um, if the body really was the certain person that they're looking for and they have to figure out who's who in it. This shows the two different labs. I bought two different kits this year. One was a crime scene where you had to find, you know, if the suspect between one and two, who was the guilty party. And then there was another one that there was a missing person and you had to figure out, you know, was it, um, I think it was Lydia or, you know, this other person that was missing, which one was the actual missing body that they found. So this shows the setup and then after they actually type it in and the results and they actually see it has a video showing how to do everything, which we watch first. And then they actually do the scene and they have to figure it out. And it's actually pretty neat when you buy the refills, like you can actually change if you want, you know, suspect one or suspect two to be your guilty party so that not everybody gets the same um, suspect. And this just shows more videos of it and the kids actually going through and setting everything up. And then finally, my student results, hands-on portions of the test to see if the students can identify a portion or part of what they discussed in the pictures. They actually do really good on the hands-on part because they understand what's going on. Kids who normally don't participate at all in class or in other classes do really well in my class on those things because they're like, hey, I understand why this works. Or they'll go to other classes and talk to their teacher and be like, did you know this? Or they'll go to the principals and be like, did you know this? Or did you know that? Like I even work with some students who are special needs and they'll go up to other teachers or principal and be like, did you know what I learned today? Or they'll do PowerPoints that they've never done before because they've learned it in my class. Uh, some quotes from my students, it says, experiments bring home concepts discussed. You can see the DNA, not just talk about it because they actually have their little necklaces and they'll be like, this is my DNA. It's not just something we learned. Um, so it, it's really something pretty neat to do. It not only just teaches them something, but it actually shows them that this is the reason why we have to learn, because it's part of me. It's part of our world. And this is just some more pictures. Um, perform CSI experiments like what you see on TV, because as soon as I bring it in, they're like, oh, I saw this last night, or, oh, I remember reading something about this and like something that they had. Um, and then, like, I want to learn more about forensic science. Some kids have actually said they want to do certain careers in science where they, it's led them into wanting to do something because of different experiments that we've done. Oh. Questions? <laughs>